Here's the battery charger I'm going to be using. This is a uh, quick uh, Delta Q quick 72 volt charger that I've converted to 144 volt. Just changed the uh, center tapped full wave rectifier to a uh, full bridge that now it produces 144 volts after changing a few of the output caps and the inductor and some other voltage sense components. It's hooked up to the programmer. Just have to load in the uh, correct algorithm that'll allow uh, remote control and charge to the correct voltage. It takes a minute or so to download. Um, I'm also going to have to cook up the uh, charge enable line J18 to uh, a relay so the BMS can uh, close that to turn on the charger, connecting it to uh, ground. That charger mod is done. Just added a relay to uh, switch the uh, remote enable or uh, temperature sensor line. Now I just have to put this in the car and hook it up. I just finished adding the charge enable relay to uh, this second charger. I've also uh, modified this one so it only runs on 240 volts. Um, to do that, let's see if I can get it in here, you take short out this resistor right here. Um, take this resistor off its pad and put it on to uh, on top of this resistor right here and solder it, solder it in parallel then short out those pads and that will make the charger run only when the input voltage is greater than about 175 volts AC. That way um, when you plug it in 120 volts only one charger runs so it won't trip the circuit breaker. And here's a slightly better view of that mod. Let's see. Okay, I think we're ready to start charging now. Let's see how this works. Let's see. Yep, the charger is running. The uh, it has about uh, 1.3 amp negative 1.3 amps offset, so we've got about uh, six amps or so going into the pack right now, which is what the charger should be doing. So it's indicating full current. Let's just test to make sure the uh, high limit works and we'll shut it off. High limit. Charger should indicate zero and it does. We should be able to Restore the outputs now. Release outputs. And if we go back to status pack, it's charging again. Let's see if we can view all the uh, battery voltages. Where was that? Nine. There's all the voltages of all the batteries. Very well matched except for that last cell, which was sort of the odd one of the bunch. It didn't come uh, packaged with all the others, so it was probably from a different batch. We'll have to see how that does. That cell is balancing. The indicator light is uh, on. The other ones are just flashing a little bit, indicating there's communications going on. But that one is shunting current, which is what it should do. We're getting more blinky lights now that uh, more cells are coming up and balancing is occurring. And that last cell is nearing the charge limit of 3.6 volts, so the charger should shut off uh, pretty soon. We'll make sure the high limit actually works under normal uh, operation. Yep, the charger just shut off. The cell got above about 3.65 volts. It's strange that all the uh, lights are on. I think now it's going to wait for that cell to come down, uh, bypassing current, uh, to try to balance the pack out. And this will probably take a while. 
I should probably uh, connect a resistor across that battery to discharge it a little bit to match it up better with all the others. I've got a light bulb load on that battery now, so let's see how it charges now. corrected the offset on the current sensor so it's actually reading properly now. Let's give it some time and see how the voltages come up. Uh, now how do we do this? Test all voltages. That's a bit more reasonable now. <coughs> Those lamps draw I think about 5.7 amps, just under what the charger puts out, so I think that last cell, or first cell, is uh, pretty much charged. All the others need to be charged. That should balance it out pretty well. While the batteries are charging, I'll get the DC to DC and uh, motor controller back, uh, reinstalled. Time to crimp on the Anderson connector. Uh, I've got this hammer or vice operated crimper, which uh, worked quite well last time. Let's just uh, give it a go again. Now, unfortunately, the wire strands are a little bit too big for this uh, contact, so I've got to remove a few of them. That's about right. Line, line it up.
all of the wiring is pretty much done now. Uh, so I think we're ready to give this a test. Uh, I've got the uh, battery simulated by some power supplies. Uh, 12 volts is connected back up. We have about 24 volts right now on the uh, main uh, traction battery. Let's just increase that and uh, see if the voltage measurement is working. That should be enough to get the uh, thing in here to display something. Nope, it's not working yet. Okay, got the dashboard display running running now. Um, originally, this display was the isolated measurement portion was powered by the uh, tap off the first battery in the pack, but that doesn't exist anymore. So. I'd set up a simple resistor and zener diode to supply that. Uh, I'd measured it only draws about 1.8 milliamps, but when I uh, actually tried it, of course, it didn't work. When I actually hooked uh, hooked it up, hooked this uh, power supply and this up to a bench power supply and ramped up the voltage, I found that the uh, supply that normally takes 1.8 milliamps actually draws up to 30 milliamps when the uh, input is below the normal range. So, as a quick and dirty workaround, I just put a capacitor on the uh, resistor zener power supply. So, when you, when you unplug this thing, the cap charges up. When you plug it in, it has enough power to get the input voltage into its normal range, where it only draws uh, the normal 1.8 milliamps. And the zener regulator supply is about 3. So, everything's all fine now. Although, if you unplug the uh, connection up in the front, and then plug it back in, this thing will stop working. Then you have to unplug and replug the connector back there to let the cap charge up. But I don't want to do anything more complex right now. But anyway, I think we're ready for a test. Let's see if this works. I tested the uh, contactor's pre-charge uh, pre works properly. At least the relays click. Let's see what it does. Okay, that's good. We're drawing... Uh, oh, the... Uh, thing went dead again unfortunately. Yeah when the when the uh, isolated supply loses power it can't communicate from the 12 volt side and it just displays garbage. Maybe that 90 some volts was just too low. Let's give it another try with high more voltage. So far so good. if the motor works. Yep. That seems to work just fine. That's pulling the 12 volts down a bit. You can hear the fan slowing down. I guess high beams, normal beams, and turn signals a little bit much. Let's give it a go with some uh, more voltage this time, and let's put it in gear and run some uh, current through. Let's see if we can actually see it move. Oh, well, yeah. seems to work just fine. Let's have a look and make sure that the uh, pre-charge is working properly. It looks like we hit the uh, current limit of these uh, power supplies, so that's not a valid test there. Because the ramp up is completely linear, which is not what you'd get with a, uh, an RC uh, charging. Well, it looks like this pre-charge is not working because this relay I installed is 24 volt. Uh, I'm going to have to go get another one. Got a proper relay now. Let's try that again.
That sounded a bit better. Let's go see what the scope says. Now that is a proper pre-charge. It takes about 600 milliseconds and it closes with, uh, what, about 20 volts across the contactor, so that's pretty good. Okay, everything is uh, connected up. We should be ready for a test now, so we can plug the main uh, connector in. Okay, here we go. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll have to try turning it on. I still have to finish up the mount for this connector, but it'll do for now. We are ready for power up. Let's see what it does. Seems to work. I think we need to go for a drive now. Anyway, I think that'll conclude this video for tonight. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.